Hi everybody, this is Adam Virgil. In this video, we're going to go over named ranges. This is a critical video in this series. We're going to be using these named ranges that we create for the entire duration of this series from this point forward. I wanted to expose you to not using named ranges because that's a critical step in this entire process. Now that we know how to not use them, it's important to understand how they work to show you the difference between what we've done prior and what we're going to do now with the named ranges. Named ranges are what you probably think that they would be, where you select a range of cells and you give it a name. While giving things a name is cool and it might make the coding easier, that's not the primary purpose for why I personally use named ranges. I use named ranges when I want to incorporate data that has not yet been added to my environment. I'll show you what I mean. Let's get started. If we go to our testing data, we're going to create a named range that includes all of our data in this spreadsheet. And the way that we can do that is we can go to data named ranges. Now we're prompted to add a range. So let's add one. Now we can name our range. We'll call this testing data. And currently, what's in this testing data range is just one cell, cell C5 in this sheet. But we want to select our entire sheet. So how we can do that is we can remove what's in here, click on this grid icon to select a range, and moving to the left of column A and upwards of row 1, we can click on this little box, which will select everything in this spreadsheet. Perfect. Now we can click OK. And done. And that's it. We created our first named range. Let's see what happens when we use this named range in practice. Let's go to our testing dashboard. What this can replace is what we've done in some of our calculations where, for example, in this calculation, we are looking for the average of something within this range, which is testing data A1 to CL, which is essentially our entire spreadsheet. The way that we can do this or exchange this for a named range is by starting to type in the name of our named range. And there it is. When we select it, there are no cell numbers, so no cell locations. It's just the name of what we decided to name our named range. And if we click Enter, there's not going to be any difference. Everything still works fine. All we've done is we've replaced the range that we've entered right here with our named range, which is essentially the same thing with a couple of benefits. Let's undo what we just did. Because what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to do a find and replace to replace everything that we've done here or in all of our formulas that use this range and replace it with our named range so that we're using our named range everywhere. The reason why that's important is because let's go to our testing data. Let's say that we add a new column. Now we go to column CM, not CL. We'll call this Adam's column. Now let's just put in some fake data. I'm going to put the number 5 into this cell and just copy it, paste it to the bottom of our sheet. Now we have some data in Adam's column, which is column CM. If we go to our testing dashboard, we're going to be able to select Adam's column in this drop down list because we made it go all across row one or where our column headers are, which includes additional headers. If we select Adam's column, we don't have any data for this athlete. But if we go into our formula and replace our hard coded range that we're looking for right here, testing data A1 to CL with our new named range, 
testing data. And we'll see it pop up like this. And we select that instead and click enter. Now we get the data. So our named range is now accommodating for added columns. That's really beneficial, especially when you don't know if you're going to add more data or not. So that's great. All right, let's remove Adam's column. I'll select body weight again here, and I'm gonna remove what we just did. Perfect. You might be thinking, oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna have to do these formulas all over again. And you don't, because we're gonna use something called find and replace. We'll go to edit, find and replace. What we're going to want to replace is the range that we had before, the hard-coded range, with this range called testing data, or our named range. To do that, we can click on a cell that has the formula, or the old formula, inside of it, like this one, the body fat one. And here's the range that we're looking at. So let's copy this, testing data A1 to CL, and paste it in the find, because that's what we want to find. And we want to replace that with our named range, which is testing data. We'll look in all sheets and also within formulas. That's really important. And we can select replace all. And yes, that's true. We do want to replace this in all sheets. Now it tells us that 289 instances of that have changed. And click done. And everything will still work fine. But when we go into these formulas, It'll say testing data instead of the hard-coded range. That was so fun, let's do it one more time. Let's go to our testing data and create another named range. This time, we're gonna create a named range for our column headers in our testing data set. To do that, we can go to data, named ranges, and create another range. We'll call this testing headers. And this really won't change anything. It'll just change what we decide to call in our formulas. So let's click done and X out of here. And now we can just do exactly what we just did. So if we go to our testing dashboard, we can replace testing data one to one, which we use frequently to refer to our column headers and go to edit, find and replace, and paste that testing data one-to-one, -one, and we wanna replace it with testing headers. And we'll also search within formulas and make sure it's with all sheets. And let's go replace all. Awesome, 290 times, we can click done. And like we were talking about, everything still works. But now, inside the formulas, we have testing headers instead of testing data one-to-one. -one. And one thing that I just realized is that we were inside this formula when we did our find and replace. So the formula was not, insi was not inside the cell when we did it for our first named range. So we need to remove this, testing data A1 to CL, and replace it with testing data. And click Enter. And that's the only one because we had the formula open while we did the find and replace. So make sure that you're not inside a formula like this while you're executing the find and replace. Great. Now, if we need to update our named range, we can do that from the named range area and it'll apply for, to all the formulas that we have that named range in. So we have this testing data named range now. Perhaps we want to change it. First, I'm going to go to my testing data set and add a couple more columns to the right. So let's select a bunch of cells, insert some left. I guess left or right is fine. Uh, where am I here? We'll add a couple more. And maybe a couple more. So that we accommodate for everything that you could potentially add. And we'll remove a few now. all the way through DB. Now we can go to data, 
named ranges, and edit our range. Let's edit it. Instead of it being from 1 to 1,000, let's change that. We'll select a new range and start with column A. And we'll go all the way to column DB. Hold down the shift key for me and click column DB to get our named range to be column A to column DB in our testing data. Perfect. Now we're accommodating for all the rows, even if we have more than a thousand. And let's click done. If we add more columns to our spreadsheet, for whatever reason, this is already a lot of columns, but if we were to add more, you just go into our named range and edit it. And instead of it being from A to DB, we might add 50 more just in case, and we could accommodate. We go back to our testing dashboard, and we'll see that everything is still working fine, even though we changed our name, named range. And actually, if we click by our named range and start to type it in again, we can see that the range has changed. It'll tell you, as you're typing in your named range, what your range includes. That's a really cool feature. That's it for named ranges. I hope this video was helpful, and we are going to use these moving forward. The ranges that we created will be used holistically throughout the rest of this project. This is the last video in Module 2. In Module 3, we're going to develop our own scoring system for our athletes, completely customized. That's also completely optional. You don't have to go through Module 3 to participate in the rest of this project. So if you don't want to develop your own scoring system for your athletes, feel free to skip it. If you haven't already, please make sure to give this video a like if it's been helpful for you. And if the content from this channel has been helpful in general, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in other videos.